Hey, it's Ash here from C4D Tech and today let's talk Pixel 7. Now I've spent well over three weeks with this phone as my primary and in this video I'm gonna sum up my take on it. So let's go on, take a look at everything Pixel 7. Now if you end up watching through this video, if you do end up liking it, drop a like. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. First guys, let's start with the build. And the Pixel 7, it looks and feels great in hand. We've got an aluminium frame with both the front and back getting Gorilla Glass Victus protection this time around. Now, if you remember last year, we only got Gorilla Glass 6 to the back, so that has changed. Now, talking about last year, the Pixel 7, it's gotten smaller, it's shorter, narrower, and even slimmer than its predecessor. Now, this is not because of some engineering magic from Google. It's just that they've chosen to go with a slightly smaller display this time. It's 6.3 inches instead of 6.4. Now, I don't particularly mind it, because to me, it makes the phone more wieldy, a little more comfortable to use. Now, that comfort is also due to the fact that this phone, it's 10 grams lighter. And the reason why it is lighter, apart from the screen size being a little lesser, is because the battery capacity has gone down from 4614 milliamp hour to 4355. It's about a 5% reduction, but the actual battery life remains more or less the same. As in, if you're gonna go about your use very aggressively, say you're gonna be gaming for a while, using GPS a lot, shooting pictures and videos, then you might end up needing to charge a second time before the end of the day. But for most moderate use cases, the battery lasts all day. I mean, it wasn't uncommon for me to end my day of, well, moderate, use with over 30% left in the tank. As for charging, the tech's not really changed. It's 20 watt power delivery, which gets you from zero to 50 in about half an hour. There's still support for 12 watt wireless charging and there is still no charger in the box. Anyways, coming back to cosmetics, the camera bar to the back, it's now metal instead of glass. I adore how it melts into the frame. I mean, the Pixel 7, to me, it looks a lot better for it. The camera bar itself, I think it feels, it looks more refined. That said, I still do miss that dual tone finish from the Pixel 6. I felt that added some much needed character to the Pixel lineup. Now, I'm not too bummed out about this lemongrass though. It's a fine color. It's quite pleasing to the eye, but I would have definitely loved it more if the phone looked like this instead. Okay, so what else? IP68 water and dust resistance has been retained. We still get stereo speakers and the output's excellent. And oh yeah, Google continues to, you know, reverse the power and volume key placements. With most phones, you'd get the volume keys on top, but not here. So this is gonna involve a bit of a learning curve. Now, for the first few days I was using this phone, I was really annoyed because I kept, every time I wanted to turn off the display, I kept hitting the volume keys instead. But by the time week three rolled around, I wasn't even thinking about it. To the point where I almost forgot to include this in the video. You know what else I almost forgot to include in this video? A quick shout out to our video sponsor. I'm not gonna forget it, let's cut to it. If you're a creator looking for a laptop that suits your workload, check out our video sponsor Gigabyte's new Aero 5. With the Aero 5, Gigabyte has paired Intel's 12th gen i7 processor with Nvidia's 30 series GPUs. That combo with an awesome color accurate 15 inch 4K OLED panel in this compact chassis it's perfect for things like Photoshop work or video editing. The backlit keyboard's pretty spacious and the trackpad's large enough to use comfortably. The presence of an RTX 30 series GPU means you could get some gaming done too in your spare time on that 4K OLED goodness nonetheless. Throw in other goodies like support for Wi-Fi 6E and a whole host of I.O. that includes HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, UHS-2 card reader amongst others. The Aero 5 is an excellent creator-focused laptop. To know more, check out the link in the description below. Okay, next up, let's talk cameras because cameras have pretty much been a constant highlight of Pixel phones in the past and they remain so with the Pixel 7 too. Now the optics themselves, they've not really changed from last year. We still get the same primary 50 megapixel sensor which has been paired with an optically stabilized f1.8 lens alongside a 8 megapixel f2.2 ultrawide. The images, as you can see, they were typically pixel with excellent dynamic range. They're quite sharp and detailed. And there was little, if any, difference in colors between the primary and secondary. So props to Google for that. While this is a 50 megapixel sensor, the images are usually downsampled to 12 and a half megapixels. Now, since this phone does not have a telephoto camera, when you shoot 2X, it just takes the information from the center of the primary sensor, allowing for lossless zoom at 12.5 megapixels. Of course, the results are further improved thanks to Google software magic. In fact, Google software, it helps to the point where even the 8x shots were kinda sorta okay-ish. Now, under low light, that is really nothing for me to say. It's a pixel with night sight. I mean, at this point, I'm not even surprised that the images came out looking this good. 
This pig beat it up. It was shot out of a moving car going at about 40 kilometers an hour. Sweet, right? It's really all about the processing here. When I take a picture on the Pixel 7, it is a process. I frame my shot, I shoot the image, jump into the gallery, then I see this little processing thing happen and the picture ends up better than fine every single time. Software is a very huge pro with this phone. I mean, take portraits for example, the edge detection, the skin tones, it's all quite accurate. The background blur is believable and natural. Google also offers a new unblur option this time around. This uses machine learning and AI to remove any unwanted blur in the images. What's great here is that these images, they don't need to have been shot via the Pixel 7. You could just add any old photo you have and the phone's gonna do a fair job more often than not. I'm sure this is one feature that's gonna end up on Google Photos sooner or later, but for the moment, it's exclusive to the Pixel 7 series. Now video, it tops out at 4K 60 and the footage is pretty good. Well, I wouldn't rate the quality over current generation Apple or, or Samsung flagships, it does come close. The cinematic mode, it works quite well too. Now while the rear camera hardware might have been the same as last year, the selfie camera, and that's received a refresh. This here's a 10.8 megapixel shooter. It's got a wide field of view. There's an option to crop in and shoot to get a more regular look selfie. The images themselves, I've always loved pixel selfies and there is no change in how I feel about them with this phone. Once again, the dynamic range, the detail, the skin tones, the edge detection, the background blur, Google's absolutely nailed it. The selfie camera, it also pulls double QD for face unlock and the fingerprint scanner that's under the display, it's, it's pretty accurate. This is not the fastest or the largest sensor that we've come across this year. The placement though, it's perfect and it more than gets the job done. Now the display itself, as I mentioned earlier, it's a little smaller than the one on the Pixel 6 at 6.3 inches. That said, the quality of the panel, it's gone up. It's still a full HD plus 90 Hertz panel, but it is brighter. This can hit 1000 nits for regular use and go all the way up to 1400 for HDR content. Now the Pixel 7, it's a relatively compact phone, but it, it is still good enough for media consumption and even gaming. Under the hood is Google's new Tensor G2 SoC. It's paired with eight gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. Now while the Tensor G2 is great for AI functionality with machine learning, it is not the most powerful SoC around. The CPU numbers, they are similar to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 from earlier this year, but there seems to be a lot of throttling going on. Also, GPU numbers aren't really all that. It's supposed to score about 800K-ish on Antutu. My unit or the firmware I was on wouldn't let me run Antutu for some reason. Uh, my Pixel 7, it kept black screening every time I tried to run it. Anyway, the point here that I'm trying to make is that this, it's not a benchmark beast. It's not the most powerful SoC on a phone today, but it is a high-end SoC, which when coupled with Google software, gives you consistent performance. With day-to-day -day use, Android 13 here, it feels very fluid and you're gonna have an excellent experience, a flagship experience when you're using this phone. For the most part. I say for the most part because with gaming, well yes, you are gonna be able to run your favorite games with this. I wouldn't suggest anyone buy the Pixel 7 if gaming is a huge part of their use case scenario. Because in that case, there are definitely phones out there that can provide you more bang for your buck. And this brings us to a very interesting question. Who is the Pixel 7 for? Who should actually buy this phone? Well, if you ask me, I'd say if photography is very important to you, if you want a flagship user experience and an all round excellent phone that is quite comfortable to hold and use, then the Pixel 7 might just be for you. Also, Google's software support is a big pro. And here's where I wanna point out that there are other Android brands, say for example, Samsung, that promise four years of software version updates compared to Google's three. And I think Google does need to do a better job with this regard. Actually, I don't think Google should even be compared to Samsung. Google should look at Apple as the standard and match or better the five years or more uh, support that they do offer with respect to version upgrades, not security patches. But anyways, that is a conversation for another day. Now, there is one thing Google does, just like Apple, and that is provide day one updates to their Pixel lineup. So while yes, there are other Android manufacturers who might provide updates for longer, but it's not uncommon for these manufacturers to actually make older flagships wait weeks, if not months for an update, because those phones are definitely not gonna be priority for them. But with Google, it's gonna be day one, just like with Apple. Anyway, moving on to pricing, for once, in India especially, 
Google seems to have gotten the pricing right. Globally, the Pixel 7 sells for 599 US dollars, which was always expected. But the Indian launch price of 5999, that wasn't. And the fact that with offers it can be bought for under 50,000 rupees makes this an even sweeter deal. Now, to give you an idea of how huge a deal this is, let's go back to the first Pixel. It launched in the USA for $649, with the Indian price being 57,000 rupees. Given the currency conversion rates back then, there was a 32% difference in the US and Indian prices. With the Pixel 7, that percentage difference is now of just 22%. If you end up snagging one with offers, you know, at 50,000 rupees or cheaper, it's pretty much the same price as in the United States. Now, there is a pro version that is more expensive and offers a lot more, but everything that Google's cut to make this phone this phone, they seem to be luxuries that one could easily live without. The larger, higher resolution screen, the faster refresh, telephoto camera, improved ultra wide that doubles for macro, these are all nice things to have, but they aren't really gonna affect your day to day use. They aren't gonna be what I'd call deal breakers. At least, that is how I see it. So, this gets a thumbs up from me. So, what do you think? Let me know if the Pixel 7 is a phone that you can see yourself picking up at some point in the future, or if there's something you don't like about this phone, let me know what it is, what it is that you don't really like about it. And while you're down there, thumbs up, thumbs down, based on whatever you felt about this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.